Today I'm going to show you how to build this home office slash gaming desk. We outfitted this desk with some really unique features. It has a built-in wireless charger on the desktop that pops up to give you extra power as well as HDMI, USB, and more. It also has a cable management tray you can access through this trap door on the desktop to keep those wires tucked neatly out of the way. You can close the trap door to hide the wires. We put a shelf on the bottom to store your games, the router, and any other office supplies. We also installed undermount LEDs to give it this cool lighting effect. If you're interested in building this desk, there'll be easy to follow build plans linked in the description below. This is a stark contrast from what my son was using this fold up table with a bunch of wires everywhere. Let me show you how we made it. This desk is very beginner friendly. We're using common boards you can buy at your local home store, one by sixes and two by twos. I cut the one by sixes in half to start with. I cut five of these about five foot long. These are gonna be our tabletop. If you don't have a jointer, no fear. I have a whole video dedicated to jointing without a jointer, so you can still do this. I get a bunch of questions on how this Wahuda jointer is holding up. After over a year of using it, it is excellent. I highly recommend this jointer. I'll put a link in the description below to all the tools and supplies you see used in this video today. Now it's time to start assembling the tabletop. I'm gonna use four of these boards. You've got five, so put one to the side. We're gonna glue four of them up. I'm gonna use tight bond two and spread out an ample amount on the edge of the board. Then I'm just gonna use clamps and clamp everything up nice and tight. I did use calls to help keep the tabletop flat while the glue dried. I put calls on each end and in the middle. Make sure to use packing tape on your calls. That'll prevent them from sticking to the boards. Next, I cut my legs to size. Now, the height of your desk really doesn't matter. 27 to 29 is the common size. We decided to go with a 28 inch tall desk because it was more ergonomic for my son. For the top apron of the desk, I need that to be a little bit wider than the two by twos. But I'm ripping this one by six down to three and a half inches wide. You can pick up one by fours if you'd rather, but I prefer to rip them down. That way I get the proper size and have good square edges all the way around. I cut the shorter aprons to size, but I also cut two by twos for the lower apron. Then I started drilling pocket holes for the joinery and that's today's sponsor, Masca Products. Masca makes an awesome line of pocket hole joinery tools and this is my favorite, the Masca M2. It's super easy to use, it makes a super strong joint and it makes it very approachable for beginners and intermediate woodworkers alike. That's why I like pocket holes so much because it's so approachable. I went with two pocket holes per joint, that way you'll have a nice solid connection. Even on the two by twos you see, they're close together but it still gives you a nice solid joint. Once everything has pocket holes in it, it's time to assemble. I use glue at every joint, even though we're still pocket holing, that'll keep everything from creaking and squeaking later. If you have clamps available, use clamps here. It'll keep your boards from moving on you when you're trying to drive those screws. And we're using inch and a quarter screws on all of these joints. To me, it was easier to attach the front apron to the front two legs, the back apron to the back two legs, and then attach the side aprons. For the bottom apron, this is a two by two we're using on the sides. I measured down about 12 inches from the bottom of the leg to the top of the apron and then attach those with pocket hole screws. Now we're gonna attach the shelf. Using glue and three pocket hole screws per end, I used a scrap one by to inset it three quarters of an inch. I also flushed it up with the top of the side aprons. I then put glue on the back of that piece that we inset, using another piece of the one by six and attached each end with pocket hole screws. Then I attached the back of the shelf to the bottom of the shelf with pocket holes from underneath. This helps solidify everything. This really makes the whole thing sturdy. That's what your frame should look like when it's assembled. I use my router and a 1 8 inch roundover bit just to slightly round over the bottom of those feet. It'll give it a nice finished look and it'll keep them from splintering later on. I also round it over any edge that I could get that router on. I sanded the entire frame with 120 grit sandpaper as well as the shelf. Now to attach the tabletop to the frame, I'm using a Festool Domino. <laughs> it's a little overkill, but it was the easiest way to cut a simple slot. You can use a 1 8 inch straight bit on your router with an edge guide and do the same thing, or a biscuit joiner will do the exact same thing, whatever you got. This is the tabletop. I put bench cookies under it. That keeps it from moving around on you when you're trying to sand it. And then I started sanding. This is how you don't sand. Do not sand this way. You'll see this edge of the sander where I'm digging into that tabletop because it was a little uneven. I had a little over too much glue that I didn't clean off at the time of clamping like I should have. So I went a little aggressive with the sanding. That causes swirl marks. I just did a video on this and is why I done a video on this because I made this mistake and I don't want you to. For the knot holes, I'm using medium thick black Starbond C8 glue. You can use brown if you're gonna stain it brown. This activator makes it set up in about 30 seconds and I filled all those that had holes in them. Then I sanded those back smooth. Once they're filled and sanded, that's pretty much what you'll have. That helps solidify those knots and keeps them from cracking and breaking later. You'll need to change your sandpaper after you're done with that. Next thing I did was took it over to the miter saw and cut it to length. Make sure you get two smooth sides here. 
Because this frame isn't very big, I just decided to go ahead and spray paint it. I'm using Rust-Oleum Black and Satin. It was just easier to do it this way versus trying to mix up some paint in the paint sprayer and then having to clean all that up. I made, I went with three coats of this paint. It worked well. While the paint was drying, I applied this pre-stain conditioner. I always use pre-stain conditioner when I'm staining because it keeps that stain looking nice and not blotchy. I put that on both sides of the tabletop. Then I applied the stain. I'm using Varathane in dark walnut. I actually like this stain a lot. It dries fairly quick in about an hour or so, so you don't have a whole lot of wait time with this. Spread it over the entire surface and then wipe off any excess. I let it set for less than five minutes probably. I don't let it set a whole long time. Do both sides that way. Don't forget that one board we left out. Remember that one? It needs to be stained as well. For the cable management tray, I picked this up on Amazon because it's cheaper than lumber. It's plastic and you can cut it on your miter saw and that's what I did. I just cut it the length on my miter saw to fit inside the frame of the desk. To attach it to the desk, you can screw it or I've got this awesome double stick tape. This is made for outdoor stuff so it's super strong and that's how I'm attaching it to the desktop. Now the desk is going to need some type of support in the middle. And so I made this piece. I went ahead and painted it black when I was painting everything else, but I did notch it to go around that tray. For the LED lights, we're using this Govi brand LED strip light. I like them because the power switch has sticky on the back and then this light strip itself also has sticky tape on the back. Plug it in, make sure it works before you install it. I mounted the power switch on the right, just underneath the desk so he can reach under and turn that on. Then I stored the cables in the cable tray. For the light strip, I attached it to the inside of the frame using this self-adhesive tape that's on there. Test, 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 test. The tabletop we're gonna use spray can lacquer. This is the first time I've ever used spray can lacquer because this was a small project. I didn't want to mix it up again. This worked excellent. I used three coats of this stuff. My only caution is to make sure you have proper ventilation because it's really fumy. I let the lacquer dry for about 30 minutes. That's the good thing about lacquer. It just dries super fast. One of the cool features we're going to add into this desk is a wireless charger for his phone on the top, but this is also, you can see it has outlets all the way around it. It also has HDMI, it has data, it has USB, and all the wires will connect underneath. The only thing that I don't really care for is how far it's going to stick down. Probably going to be able to see it from the side of the desk, but we're going to hide those wires so that you really don't see anything but this base sticking out. So the only thing we gotta do is drill this hole. I have a giant hole saw that fits this diameter. This will slide into the hole. No going back now. Drilling into the tabletop, I drill halfway through or just when it starts poking through the other side. And then I finish up the hole from the other side. That keeps anything from splintering and breaking out on you. Use 120 grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth over those edges. Just a test fit. Whoop, whoop. For the trap door, we're gonna be attaching those with these two inch narrow hinges. This will help everything be real minimalistic. Make sure you pre-drill those holes because you don't want anything splitting at this point. Put that on first before you attach the tabletop. If you like this build so far, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. So you wanna make sure to avoid this cross piece here that's your center brace to keep anything from sagging. It's a pretty good spance with just thin wood three quarters of an inch. So you'll get a little sagging if you don't add that support. This is a two inch Forstner bit. I'm gonna drill from underneath to finish that hole. I don't want it to bust through. So we're gonna go down here and do one for the computer sets. Now, if you've ever seen these little inserts, they're terrible about popping out and I hate that. So we're gonna install those with CA glue. Put glue on the wood and then spray the activator on the plastic piece, set it in place. Then we're gonna install the top using the tabletop fasteners. Now it's time for this pop-up charger to go in. And I like that it has this piece on here that screws it in tight. Test, boom, it works. That's what we wanted. Now to keep everything nice and tidy, we're using this power strip and I'm actually gonna mount this with that double stick tape too underneath the desktop. Just make sure you got a good clean surface from that sawdust that's on it. Once that's stuck, you can start plugging stuff in and managing those cables. Also I have these little cable ties that I picked up. These are great because you can screw them in place and hold those wires. So I decided to put these holes to access for the cables to go through the desktop uh, actually on this side of the opening because we could drop the cable. We'll pretend this is a computer cable. I could drop the cable through there like that. And then we could also still close the tabletop and I wouldn't have to remove anything to actually open this flap. I was gonna put them on this side, but if that was the case, then something would have to give. I would actually have to 
probably leave a notch or something in there so that the cable could pass through there. This way it can pass through right there and it can go into that cable tray super easy and it, you won't have to move anything and you could always access your cables by just lifting this up. And that's just super cool. I got a lot of extra parts and pieces here. We're gonna take these over to his house, set this up in his gaming room, set his gaming computer up. You gotta see this thing, it is sick. And then you'll see it all set up with all the cables properly managed. All right, remember where he was at. He has all this mess of wires running everywhere and a cheap plastic table. We're gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna bring this desk in and start managing that cable mess. I let him set up his computer and his monitor where he wanted them and then I helped him run the wires. The reason I went with two wire ports on the top of this desk is I wanted one behind the monitor, one behind the computer. That way we could run the mouse, the keyboard, and the monitor cables down through the port, through the track, and then up over at the computer. Then I use these hook and loop cable management ties to clean the wires up even better. Then I attach the cables to the back of the shelf to keep everything up off the floor. Any of these power adapter bricks, you're going to need to secure those up and out of the way. I use a command strip here, but you can also use that double stick tape from earlier. I also use some cable ties to pull those wires nice and tight to the desktop. Any leftover wires that were able to be put into the tray, we put those in. Now you can access that cable tray from the top if he ever wants to add any more wires. This is such a minimalistic look because there's no wires dangling out from under the desk. They're not laying on the floor anymore. It just makes it a much more productive space when you don't have such a mess. If you want to build a desk like this, there's easy to follow plans linked in the description below. Click that box right there. It's going to take you to another desk build video that you're going to love. If you click that box, you get the big old virtual fist bump. Also, if you want to see how to attach a tabletop or a desktop to a frame, you can click that box.